Is he coming Good evening, in? welcome to the Southbridge Special Town Council meeting of Monday, I'll come up after. June 28th, 2021, 6 p.m. in Council Chambers. Roll call, Council Adams. Present. Council Daniel. Present. Council Catrona. Present. Council Dow is excused. Council Jovens, <clears throat> present. Council Lazo. Present. Council Ryan. Present. Council Steves is excused. And Council Marchetti. Present. Okay, we do have a quorum. So uh, for the purposes of this meeting, our recording secretary will be transcribing uh, and doing the minutes <clears throat> based on the recording because she could not be here uh, at six o'clock. And she's the only one we have scheduled for this now. <clears throat> the agenda item this evening is to discuss credible evidence by the animal control officer regarding the violations of the nuisance dog order issued by the town council on January 28th, 2021, with the recommendation not to award the dog back to Mr. Zielinski. <clears throat> Just as a reminder, this matter is being held pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 140, Section 157. As everyone is aware, we conducted a lengthy dog hearing back on January 28th. I think it went somewhere in the order of four hours. We got in uh, Mr. Zielinski's uh, dog and incidents <clears throat> pursuant to that. Mr. Donald Zielinski of 33 Henry Street. The purpose of this hearing is to determine whether or not there was a violation of the nuisance dog order and to take any action by the town council. Just a few rules on the hearing itself. All persons wishing to speak must be recognized by the chairman. All those wishing to speak must introduce them, themselves by the name and address or affiliation be at the podium over there. We do not have an attorney here present for the town, and I do not believe you have an attorney present as well. So we'll hear the testimony first on the town of Southbridge officers, the animal control officer, and if there's any further information by the chief, then we'll have information from uh, Mr. Zielinski and any other witnesses. Um, and then at the conclusion of that uh, presentation, um, we will then deliberate as to the next steps. My intent on this is we will not rehash the public hearing of January 28th. That was a lengthy hearing. We had a lot of evidence. This hearing is specific to the violations that are alleged to have occurred based on our order of January 28th. So I just want to make that clear because uh, I'm not... <laughs> Do not want to, it's hot up here, and I want to have everybody have the opportunity to hear, be heard, but we do not need to hear the uh, order, uh, the violations. So on January 28th, after that order, um, the notice was hand delivered to Mr. Zielinski on January 28th, in which there was three, uh, there was several items that we were ordered, um, and then, uh, it was a violation of that order. So we'll first hear, I guess, from Mr. Town Manager. Do you have anything to add or are we prepared to go forward? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you noted, we did have the hearing back in January on this matter. At that time, um, you had ruled on the matter and I had sent a letter which was delivered in hand to Mr. Zielinski outlining the potential penalties under Mass General Law, Chapter 140, Section 157A. Uh, I was alerted shortly after the Friday, June 11th event by ACO Spencer, who was here this evening. She informed me of the nature of the, the offense, and she, she went into detail and subsequently provided me with the information that you have this evening. I've also been contacted by Mr. Zielinski, who did express his desire to have this hearing this evening and did talk to him and explain where his dog was being currently held. Uh, and with that, Mr. Chairman, I would suggest that you take um, the time to hear from both parties as to what happened and determine your outcome, and then we can discuss, based upon your finding, what, if anything, would be the appropriate remedy under Chapter 140, 157A, if you do deem that Mr. Selinsky did, in fact, violate the terms of the order that we issued back in January. Thank you. Okay, first, uh, Chief Whitson and ACO Spencer. I don't know who wants to go first. And just for the public and for the councilors, you should have all gotten the packet which I had asked the town um, 
on the town side here that all councils received um, the minutes from that meeting as well as other supporting documents from that hearing and looking at the minutes that was a five hour plus meeting so ACO Spencer Good evening, Caitlin Spencer, Southbridge Animal Control. All right, give us a second. We're going to have them tear it, turn it up. Yeah. It might take a second for that to go up. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, Caitlin Spencer, Southbridge Animal Control. I'm here to present the violations that have occurred since the nuisance dog order has been issued from the town council back in January. There was a couple of instances that I have noted since this order was put past. Um, I'll start with the first, um, sorry, the most recent violation which occurred on Friday, June 11th. Um, as I was patrolling the town of Southbridge as I normally do during my normal work hours, I patrolled the recreational areas of the town of Southbridge looking for public nuisance violations and dog litter violations. One of my areas that I patrol is the Henry Street Park and Field. And as I was coming down on Henry Street, I observed Mr. Selinski in the gated playground area with his dog, Vegas, unmuzzled. At that time, Vegas was laying calmly on the ground um, without the restraint mechanism on his face. I pulled the truck over and addressed Mr. Selinski of where was the muzzle for Vegas. Uh, Mr. Selinski became alarmed of my presence and as we had the hearing about the dog's behavior, that same type of behavior was exhibited with the dog Vegas. Uh, the dog started barking, his hackles were up, moving in a forward motion. Uh, at that time, after the dog barked for a little bit at my presence, that's when Mr. Selinski decided to put the muzzle back on his dog. When asked why he did not have a muzzle on his dog, he stated that the dog was vomiting and was choking and he took this muzzle off to help relieve the stress of the dog. I also just wanna make point with the type of muzzle this dog has, it's a open basket muzzle. This is used in veterinary practices for aggressive dogs and it's supposed to be able, if things can pass through it and things can go in. So dogs can eat with this, they can drink with it. If they're vomiting, they can vomit without it obstructing or causing any aspiration to the dog. Um, so as the dog was acting in a protective manner, the dog was in the prohibited zone of the playground area and I asked Mr. Selinski to leave and go home with his dog. Uh, he proceeded to continue his walk throughout the town with his dog and did not go back to his apartment, which I found was a little odd with, if your dog is sick, why would you continue with walking the dog and not bring it home in that type of manner? Um, I went back to the station, reported my findings to the shift supervisor, the actions were taken, um, we decided to take action and seize the dog since it was a violation of the town order and the fact that the muzzle was there for safety reasons and it was not in place. When we made contact with Mr. Selinski, who is already on Mechanic Street, sitting right next to the AO with the dog Vegas, muzzled at that time. When we approached Mr. Selinski with the dog, the dog again exhibited the same behavior, standing, hackles up, barking at us. Uh, we made Mr. Selinski aware that what we were there for, and Mr. Selinski voluntarily walked the dog across the street to place Vegas into the ACO truck. As we observed, Vegas was pulling Mr. Selinski to the point that he was having a hard time actually keeping his footing. I've been in touch with the trainer, Carlos Flores, who has spent multiple hours training Mr. Selinski and this dog, and the reports that I have received from the trainer is, is that the dog can walk at a heel position. The dog was not exhibiting that training that Mr. Flores has been putting all that time into. Uh, so the dog was transported to our holding facility, which is in the town of Oxford. He was handed the packet that he would need to petition for his dog back from the hearing authority. Um, I was in contact with Mr. Selinski. He did ask to visit his dog during this time period, which I did grant. We had a meeting set up of when he could go visit his dog. Uh, over the weekend, he left a message on my answering machine saying that he's declining 
visitations of his dog because he did not want to stress the dog out any further than it already was. The dog at the kennel right now is still showing signs of fear. Uh, the dog is not soliciting attention from any of the handlers at the kennel. Uh, when we go over to his cage, he's in the back. He goes to the back and doesn't come forward. Which usually after seven to ten days, a dog, you know, they'll be a little bit more friendly. Realize that we're providing food and all that stuff, and they'll be more apt for handling at that time. Uh, the other things that I have observed since the here the order has been passed, uh, Mr. Selinski's leash system has not met our requirements. Uh, this is a three foot leash. He's been walking with a regular six foot leash attached to his hand and he was supposed to have a three foot leash and also a four foot leash attached to his person. He has had two leash systems every single time I have observed him throughout the town. However, they're just not matching the length. Uh, and then another point I would like to bring up back in January when we passed this order Hours after his dog was returned to him, Mr. Selinski was walking on Worcester Street with Vegas, with a muzzle, but with one leash. When asked where the secondary leash was, he didn't really have an answer for that, and I requested for, his, um, for him to go home until he can get that second leash. I did take a picture of it. I did provide that picture in the packet just for documentation purposes for the future. That sums up basically what I have observed throughout the town during, since January. <clears throat> Councilors, questions? Councilor Ryan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to ACO Spencer. Um, was anyone else in the park during the time in which um, Mr. Zelensky had Vegas unmuzzled? Nobody was in the playground area when Vegas was okay. unmuzzled. Okay. Um, that was my only question, actually. Thank you. Um, ACO Spencer, a couple questions. That area you said it was the gated playground area, it's a pro prohibited area of the park. Is that prohibited by the town for any animals to be in that area? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, all public recreational areas are pro are prohibited zone for pets due to a board of health issues. We do not want animals to be voiding in areas where children are playing where zoonotic diseases can be um, passed on to humans. No, understandable. I just want to make sure that that's a town regulation. It's not a special regulation that was placed on Mr. Zelensky specific to these incidents. Is it that is correct? a town and believe a state regulation. Okay. Thank you. Um, As far as the leash system goes, um, you stated that it was a th uh, three foot, but what, what, what size leash did he have? Uh, you said it was not a three foot, correct? It was what, a six foot? They were the standard six foot size in length. Was the, Mr. Zelensky trying to attempt to make it into three foot, but was it six foot or was it just on the six foot leash? I am unaware of what Mr. Solinsky was trying to do with the leashes that he had okay, in his no. possession. Um, okay. If I, if Go I ahead. May, Mr. Chair, it made me think of a question, follow up. Um, the secondary leash, the one that's supposed to be attached, was that one also a six foot or was that a four foot? It was the same length as the handheld okay. one. Councilor Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, just a uh, quick question. When you guys took the dog over a mechanic from, from him, how did the dog act at the very beginning? When you walked over to the dog, how did the dog act? In the same type of behaviors that we have exhibited from this dog in the past, barking, standing in front of Mr. Solinsky in a protective manner, hackles up, moving forward. How was the dog's reaction once you took Vegas from him, like when he walked back across the street and walked into the PD? When I had possession of Vegas and brought him to the town shelter, I took him for a walk. He was muzzled at that time, so I felt confident in my safety with the dog. I could tell due to my experience with dog training, there has been training put into him. 
he would heal on a walk and I would do a right and left hand turn and he would stay by my side. However, I had to establish that I was the leader for this dog and not just let him do what he wanted to do. So I made him sit and wait before I made him come out of the truck. He tried to pull, I corrected it the minute he started to pull. And then he realized by looking at me and giving me eye direction that I was going to be in charge. Now that he's in a kennel without the muzzle, um, he's not showing that. Okay, thank you. Just to explain from, no, strike that, I'm good. Any other counselors? Right now? Council Marchetti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. Your recommendation is that the dog not be rewarded back to Mr. Selinski. That is your recommendation? And what happens to the dog if you don't reward him back? Does, is the dog put down? What happens to the dog? So my intent for the dog is to try to find a rescue that will accept all of these town orders that have been placed on it. Um, with the understanding this dog has a bite history and also with these restrictions that now follow this dog throughout the rest of its life, throughout the Commonwealth. Um, the other thing is we would try to get it to pass a behavior exam as well to determine the outcome of the disposition of this dog. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Everybody, all councils also? Chief, do you have anything else to add or are you good? All right. Okay. I guess we'll hear from Mr. Zielinski first and, or if you have somebody that's advocating on your behalf. Sure. You have to go. Podium, sir, is it? No, I'm going to give you the Yeah, probably better I approach. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Not to, not to alarm you. Right? How's it sit? I don't think he's going to do it. That's just. You have, wait till you get to the mic, Mr. Zlin. Go to the mic before you start, and we'll, we'll get Thank going. You. That's just a piece of paper with my thoughts on it okay. uh, that I put down ahead of time. So. All right. So if you could just state your name and your address for the record, please. Donald Selinski, 33 Henry Street, Southbridge. Yeah. For the record, I want to tell you of my past five months with Vegas and the emergency choking incident. Since January 29th to June 11th, Vegas and I go for daily walks. We go for a lot of them. I would say around at least five to six hours a day. An hour in, an hour out, an hour in, an hour out. It's a great form of exercise for me, and it's, uh, it's emotional support for me too. And it's helpful for the dog also. He gets plenty of exercise. We do this every day of the week, and it has a calming effect on the both of us. I've had his muzzle on every day along with the two leashes, and I've completed all but two of Carlos's training sessions. Carlos has been very busy and will return to finish the two, especially since COVID has died down. The training has worked, and I'm more confident than ever that I got a great hold on Vegas and security. He has done so good. He really has. We haven't had any incidences on our daily walks. And the rooming house that I live in, there are two small children that live there. And they play with him all day long. And he loves them. And he's calm around them. On June 11th, I was walking Vegas, and he suddenly began to choke violently. You know how dogs heave before, they're, before they vomit? They start to heave. And I noticed he was panicking, and as he was trying to open his mouth wider. I have a muzzle here that I had on him at the time.
It's the similar muzzle, but this one's a little bit smaller. And I put it on him because I was only going out the house for a short walk around the block because the night before he had been sick. He threw up in my bed. And he, she sleeps next to me for 11 and a half years. And he threw up in the bed. And so I grabbed this leash, I mean this muzzle, instead of the bigger one. I headed to the closest bench, thinking I had time to go and remove his muzzle, but he was heaving more, so I took the muzzle off and tried to settle him down. He threw up and cleared his throat. He laid down for a bit, and he was calm, so I walked back to the bench to put his muzzle back on, and he laid down again. I let him rest and was about to put the muzzle back on, when Officer Spencer shouted from about 25 yards away, why does he have his muzzle off? I said he was choking and he just threw up. She told me I should have taken him home. I tried to explain, but she just yelled at me, do you have dog bags? And I says, of course I do, and I showed her. I haven't taken him off, I always have them on. A short time later, I went to the police station to make sure that Officer Spencer knew that it was a temporary choking emergency that caused me to use that area and remove his muzzle. I also wanted to explain that the night before, Vegas had vomited while sleeping in bed. And I had pictures of it here on my camera of the sheets. I took pictures as soon as I came back from the house. I didn't walked the dog around the town. I went home right away, took pictures of it, went in the house. And so I got pictures of the sheets hanging. Officer Spencer came over with the paperwork and said she was taking the dog because he wasn't wearing a muzzle and in a no pet area. I tried to explain that she said it was up to the board now. I spoke to another officer telling him about my grandfather being chief of police in my hometown and growing up around police officers and how I had respect for him and for the law. I told the police officer I thought Officer Spencer didn't like Vegas because he's a pit bull and didn't like me for reasons that I can't still figure out. She didn't want to hear any explanation but rather just took the dog from me. Why didn't she just hear me or give me a warning for this emergency instead of taking my dog away and putting him in a kennel, which is causing great anxiety and me anxiety? Vegas and me have been so careful to follow all the town orders of January 28th. I never leave Vegas alone. I don't tie him up to the trees anymore and go in the store. He's always muzzled. I have... Two leashes, one a four-foot leash that's attached to my belt, and this is the one I have on. I got a measuring tape there. This is a, a three-foot, four-inch leash, not a six-foot leash. This is the one I have with my hand on, and this one is made to be um, three feet, and these knots have been there for a long time, and I have video of me two months before with this very leash on. And you can see on the video, when I walk in Vegas, you can see the leash has these knots right on it. I just got very scared for him and I went to the bench. And I know it was wrong. If this has happened in the house, I wouldn't even be in this trouble. We've been doing so good for five months. I called my caseworker and explained Vegas' situation. She's over there, Judy. And she called the ACO to explain what happened, and the ACO just said it's out of her hands. This isn't Vegas' fault. He was choking. This is my fault. It's not the dog's fault for being sick. It's my fault for taking him to that area. But I was just scared. I should be punished and not the dog. The dog's going to be put down. We all know that. We all know that. He's going to be put down. He's too old to uh, adopt out. And with his history, nobody's going to take all those rules on a dog. 
there are other remedies in your notice of decision, and I will do any of them. You can give me a $500 fine and 60 days in jail, or you can give me a year in jail and a $1,000 fine. I don't care. I'll do anything for this dog. Just don't punish Vegas, punish me. This dog only has me and I only have him. And he's the only thing important in my life. He's the only reason I'm living. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zelensky. Mr. Zelensky, why don't you stay there for a minute in case counselors have questions oh, of you? Sorry. No, that's okay. That's okay. It's a lot easier doing this in person than it was on that Zoom call, let me tell you. Yeah. Um, questions? No? So, uh, Mr. Zelensky, a couple things. I, this is very difficult, I know, for a lot of counselors up here because, I mean, that, that was a very... Um, long hearing with a lot of information provided and a lot of different viewpoints and uh, the council did give a I, I think a fair decision to you to what our expectations were um, and I certainly understand your your position and I understand the ACO's position I mean um, as officials that are sworn to uphold the laws of the Commonwealth and the town you know, that's their job, and their job is to follow through on orders, so um, I don't see any way if she's, she's patrolling the park and she sees you and the muzzle's off, and you admit that the muzzle's off, yeah. for whatever reason it is, it is incumbent on her to make sure that she follows her duty to, to follow up as to what that reason is, and we can debate why you did it and why you didn't, but you're in an area in the park that you're not supposed to have the dog to begin with. Well, the, the, he isn't a pet. A dog is a pet. No, he's a service animal. Well, okay. Let me ask you this. We're five months in, and Carlos hasn't finished your training, although we set up a training plan. Is that correct? Yes, he hasn't finished it yet. Uh, Why is that? I, I, I don't want to hear the COVID reason because a lot of people work with COVID and I know it's been very difficult to get the report and we say, hey, where's this report? Uh, oh, I forgot. I, well, you know, he, he has, has he documented any training by via video of you and him with the dog? No, but I have video of me with the dog. Uh, I, you know, any training videos at all. You have two more sessions left, supposedly. Yeah. Does and he come to your house? Yes, he does. He comes all the way from Boston. Okay. Council Controller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you, if, uh, just to make a few points, Mr. Solinsky, good evening. Um, just to go back quickly on the 28th of January, I was one of the votes that, and one of the councils that stated you shouldn't have got, received this dog back. I didn't believe in the program then. Here we are tonight, the dog was in a prohibited zone, no muzzle, the dog is still showing fair according to our ACO. And there was a leash violation as well. Our ACO is appointed for a reason, and she's in that position to make sure that she follows the letter of the law. Guidance was given on that evening, and in my opinion it hasn't been followed, especially with the dog showing fair. I have to support the ACO this evening because this wasn't, the program wasn't followed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have anybody else that would yes, provide I do. information? Okay. Yes. Who do you have coming up? Uh, All right. I'm going to ask that you state your name or your address. And again, we're not here to rehash anything from no. the previous hearing. I don't know. I've read the things. The, I wasn't involved okay. in the case. So this, this will be specific to the violations of this order, okay? Will do. All right. Judy Just, Dunahue, 39 Church Street, Auburn, Mass. I'm employed through Family Continuity slash Behavioral Health, Metro West. And I am Mr. Solinsky's care coordinator. And I have been through heck and back the last week and a half with this gentleman. And I don't even want to know what's going to happen. 
I, this shouldn't have never happened. I agree, he was wrong, he admitted. I also had a conversation with Caitlin on that Monday, and you will see in my letter to all of you, I'm taking it as a very personal thing. It was something she was looking for, saw it. It shouldn't have happened, he got sick. She did say to me, if he was sick, he should have been home. And my response was, animals get sick. They eat things, they get sick, cats get sick, I have a cat. She was very, very sarcastic through the phone call, very um, dead set. I wasn't gonna go there with her. And I knew that this was coming up because I already talked to Dawn and I talked to a woman at the town hall, knew this was gonna be a seven day. Um, it's just very detrimental to his mental health, to his care. I've said to my agency, if, this, if he does not get this dog back, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I do not know. He made a mistake. It's his dog. I don't know if any of you have pets, you like your kids. But yes, he was wrong. But he had a reason for taking that muzzle off. She does have a job to do. I get it, I have a job to do. And my job right now is to care for his <clears throat> mental health. That is my concern. And I have put tons of time, guys, into this in the last week and a half. <laughs> And my heart's breaking for this man, I'll be honest. And I know he messed up before. And he promised to do what he was supposed to do. And he did, nothing since. She did say, tell me that day about the leash. Well, why didn't she write up the leash thing that day? Ma'am, no. speak, speak into the mic, do not address ACO Spencer. I'm sorry, ACL I'm Spencer. sorry. I understand you're passionate. Continue, please. She didn't write up the leash, she did bring it up tonight. She brought it up to me that he didn't have a leash when she seen him. She did nothing then. Obviously, it wasn't that big of a deal. That's the way I looked at it. The main thing is, this was something I feel, and I've talked to many of people in law, and I have a criminal justice bachelor's degree. I'm not some stupid woman, okay? I've talked to many people. To seize a dog for that reason was unheard of. People I spoke with. Citation. Fine, he's willing to do jail time. I just think it was a very, very harsh thing. I know what I've been dealing with from him, and I can only go so far. And he is willing to do anything, anything, to have him back. And sir, I know you said you weren't far at the last time. He is a scary looking guy, but he's his boy, it's his pet. He's been around kids, no problem. And I understand why she was scared, because I would be scared if an, a uniformed person comes up to me too. The animals sense the same thing. That's how I look at that behavior. And all I ask you all is just give him another chance. His mental, his health, he's not eating. He's just, he's gonna give up, guys. And you know what? I know you all have a job to do. And I believe in all of you that you'll feel and do the right thing. And I know you represent this town and the community, and you all have jobs, including Caitlin, and I appreciate you all for what you do. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mr. Go. Just state your name, address, and your affiliation with Mr. Zelensky, please. So, good evening. My name is Susan Wills. I live at Seven Large Road in Lynn, Massachusetts, and I'm a friend of Donald in Vegas. Okay. Can you just pull the mic up to your face a little bit? I apologize. It's Sorry. Hard to hear. Go ahead. So, good evening, Mr. Chairman and Council Members. Uh, as I said, my name is Susan Wills. I've been a friend of Donald in Vegas for about two years now. I met them when I made a delivery of dog food to Donald from a pet supply pantry. I met Vegas that day, on leash, no muzzle, and a perfect gentleman. Vegas knows friends and foe, as do all dogs. I've continued to stay in touch with Donald, helping to support him by buying dog food, toys, and equipment for Vegas as needed. I've been following this situation since day one, and I have some observations I'd like to share. I did attend the first hearing. First, the number one priority is the continued safety of the Southbridge community, understood. Donald committed voluntarily to acquire insurance, muzzle his dog, and use two leashes to manage Vegas, 
I was the one who purchased that four-foot leash that Donald uses to clip to his belt. I've been working with wildlife rescue, wildlife rehabbers, and wildlife rescue rides for two and a half years now. I've met a lot of ACOs from across the state, and I've learned a lot about the critical role of ACOs in a community, and I am concerned by what I'm seeing happen to this man and his dog in this community. As an ACO, an ACO is a professional who must be unbiased and impartial in their work, who must work with the citizens of the community to help teach and educate about the rules and regulations in the community, but also to be compassionate, to have empathy, to support, encourage, collaborate, to respond and communicate with professionalism, and to do whatever they need to do to help the members of their community live in peace and harmony with their pets in combination with keeping the community safe. What I've seen happening to this man and his dog, I fear, is becoming personal. I spoke to a couple of ACOs I work with about what happened on June 11th and, and in the past. I asked them how they would have responded. Neither one of them would have seized the dog that day. They would have issued a warning or a citation, but would have also used that opportunity to talk and listen to the dog owner and encourage his continued progress. Since the last hearing, Donald has worked extremely hard to help to abide by the rules established and followed through with what was asked. For the past five months, I've watched this man become happier, more confident, and independent, and he was so happy to share how much he was learning from the trainer. I'm so proud of what he's accomplished, as should all of you be. I believe that five months is a pretty good indicator for a, full, for a future long-term success. All Donald wants is to be with his dog and live in peace in, this, in the town of Southbridge. And I believe you, the town council and the ACO, instead of waiting for him to fail, need to support and encourage him and help him to be successful. He's already shown that he can be successful. I believe the situation on June 11th was handled inappropriately. Before the ACO arrived, there was no situation. It is interesting that the ACO arrives at the very moment when Vegas had his muzzle off, but it happened. Vegas was choking, Donald removed the muzzle to give him some relief, and was going to put it back on. For all of us who are dog owners, we probably would have all done the exact same thing. The ACO, instead of assessing this moment as a teaching or coaching moment, reacted with hostility and Donald in Vegas reacted in kind. That poor dog. It feels like this ACO has a vendetta out against Donald in Vegas for some reason. It is the ACO's job to respond with professionalism and clearly that did not happen here. She should have used that as an opportunity to talk to Donald, tell him to put the muzzle back on and reinforce not to do it again. But why couldn't she have used the opportunity to also say, Donald, you in Vegas have been doing a great job for five months, but you need to keep following the rules. It would have gone a long way to helping rebuild this relationship between Donald and the ACO. Why couldn't she show some compassion and kindness? Why is it always antagonistic? He's worked really hard to keep his part of the deal. The ACO needs to work on her part too. I'm concerned about her ability at this point to be impartial to Donald in Vegas. She's looking to create a picture of Vegas that doesn't exist today. Vegas has been a very good dog and very tolerant and accepting of the chains which you are making him wear. One final note, the ACO made a comment in the last sentence of her statement about Vegas being rewarded back to Donald. We are not talking about a toy here. You want to punish Donald by euthanizing his dog? This is a very serious matter and for you to liken it to a to toy or punishment reward is deeply concerning. This is about a man's life and a dog's life, not a toy. It is not about you being right and winning. Mr. Chairman and council members, I urge you to recommend the immediate release of Vegas and that you all continue to support and encourage Donald's hard work. This incident never should have escalated this far and it should not be grounds for imprisonment or euthanasia for Vegas. Vegas's options are limited, as it would be very difficult to adopt out a 10-year-old pit bull. I implore you all to do the right thing and allow Donald and Vegas to go back to living their lives in peace and to continue to make the Southbridge community safety their number one priority. I thank you all for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you.
Do you have anyone else? How are you today? My name is Carrie Gibo. I live at 27 Henry Street. I'm the neighbor of, of that gentleman. I see the dog every day, five times a day. Um, I'm a healthcare worker and also a mandated reporter. I've lived on the side of him for about two years. I've known him probably about one. I never see an issue with that dog. Yes, he might have caused a couple of violations, but that day I had physically seen that dog get sick. I asked him if he wanted a bowl of water. He said that, that uh, he was probably going to take the dog home. I said, well, I think it's a good idea you give the dog fresh air. He lives in a rooming house with a whole bunch of people, two children, the ages of 12 and 7, which are very high strung. The dog never has issues with them. He's a very good dog, and when the dog goes into like a pounce, he's protecting his owner. My dog protects me. We protect our children, okay? Um, but what they don't notice and what they don't see is his tail. Wagging. I go over and see him all the time. I bring him treats. My dog, I just had to euthanize him and put him down. I gave him all the things from Second Chance that got donated. I gave him some frontline. I gave him a leash, a second leash to hook to the top of the harness. And, and at that day that he was at the park, the children were in school. There was nobody at Henry Street Park. And yes, it might say, no dogs allowed. Everybody walks their dog there. It's just not him. He's not, he's not the only one that should be punished for having a dog there. But the reason why he really didn't have that muzzle on him, because that dog was vomiting. And he was going to take him back home. It's very warm in that rooming house. When they, like five, six people live in that apartment. In the same building he lives in. The same room he lives in. That dog has never attacked any child or physically tried to harm any child or me. And I'm a mandated reporter. And that, that's, that's really all I have to say, because that's really what I witness and see every day. And I've never seen anybody so loving and take care of a dog like this gentleman. And I also have witnessed that trainer, because I went outside and I had talked to the trainer. Um, the trainer was there training that dog. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. My name is Mary Lou Mariganis. I um, am uh, um, advocating for um, Donald Salinsky. Yep. yep, Nine Skipper Way, Gloucester, Massachusetts. Um, and I'm with an organization, Animal Rescue Connection. The first in your packet at the top is the letter from Carlos explaining the training that has gone on. And um, so I encourage you to read that regarding um, his, the um, response to the officers um, being in that protective mode that a dog senses um, when there is confrontation and that's what was happening. As far as every day um, walking the dog, um, he goes as far as to say that he's probably better than most average um, dog owner at this point. We do have a great video um, showing that, that that the dog's very loose on the leash, heels, there were kids around and noise in the background. I encourage you to view that if, if you would like. Um, I would like to um, do some counterpoints to officer, um, to the ACO's report. If you would look at the report, I have some highlights with numbers and then my counterpoints are correlate to the numbers. So. Just for brevity, I'm not going to read her letter, obviously, but one, the dog was lying down and appeared to be resting, and I said, yes, that is correct. Vegas was recovering from a choking situation and vomiting incident. Um, two, in the uh, uh, highlights, uh, she observed the leash system Mr. Selinsky has been using, which does not meet the three-foot and four-foot lengths as well. Um, Please refer to Carlos's letter where he confirms the leashes, leashes used were a four-foot leash attached to its person and a three-foot leash knotted attached to the harness. Again, we have video showing that, so that, you know, showing that that is the case. Um, Sue Willis purchased the four-foot leash off, um, so that's um, the fact regarding those leashes. I'm not sure where the ACO has the information that it's not 
um, what was ordered. Three, um, he, he stated he took the muzzle off because the dog was choking, vomiting, and was sick. Again, yes, that's correct. Donald was scared the dog would choke to death. He's not a trained vet tech, and he took immediate action. I think what most of us would have done in that situation. Um, it's additional to note that he had full control of Vegas in order to apply the muzzle and take it off. Four, Mr. Selinsky stated, started to accuse me of harassing him because I wanted his dog dead. Well, Donald was frustrated because the dog was choking badly. The ACO showed no interest in how the dog was doing. To Donald, her concern was only violations. Prohibited area, no muzzle, dog bags. Now, to Donald, her attitude was not one of encouragement and support, but rather of issuing violations. So, yes, he was frustrated at the time. Um, five, he continued to walk his dog throughout the town after our interaction, which I found was odd since he stated the dog was sick. Well, this is a temporary choking situation and dogs recover and um, he normally walks his dog all the time, seven days a week, so it's, it was just a normal routine for him to do that, to continue to do that. Um, Six, Vegas was not showing any obvious signs of illness and looked eager to continue his walk. Again, yes, as I said, dogs bounce back and they recover fully from getting sick or choking and the like. Um, I'm sure you've had dogs and one minute they're throwing up, the next minute they're rolling in the grass. So, um, Seven, um, Mr. Selinsky walked the dog across the street and he had difficulties keeping his footing during... Um, footing due to the dog pooling. Donald walks Vegas seven days a week, multiple times a day. He's not somebody who just comes home from work, walks his dog around the block, goes and has some beer and, and watches TV. He does it all the time. There have been no such incidents of complaints. He sees police all the time, cruisers pass. There's been no incidents of complaints by police or citizens. Um, and then in the letter from Carlos, it confirms Donald's handling abilities. And once again, I encourage you to look at that short little video that Donald had made. Um, eight, uh, with one uh, six-foot leash that first day, yes, Donald was on his way to get the second leash, and um, he, which he used continuously since then. So ever since then, he has used that second leash. And once again, the leash is three foot long. Um, nine, Mr. Selinsky's inability to follow directions. Donald has followed, followed the two-leash requirement, the muzzle requirement, the insurance requirement, the microchip requirement, and the training requirements. It's an inaccurate statement. Ten, there is no accountability taken, and he's more concerned about deflecting the situation. Donald went to the police station waiting to see the ACO to explain to her what happened that day and why he had the muzzle off and that, and, and that it was an emergency. Instead, his dog is taken away. So that, it, he was showing accountability, he was, and he wasn't deflecting. Um, and finally, um, what re requires a strong able handler, which Mr. Stalinsky has demonstrated multiple times, he is not. Once again, he walks his dog seven days a week, multiple times a day. Carl confirms Donald's handling abilities in his letter that you, um, that you have um, and states he's in more control of his dog than the average dog owner. So um, I just, in summary, this is what we're faced with, as I see. We have an unfortunate temporary single emergency dog choking incident. Donald has complied with everything, the insurance, the muzzle, the training, the two leashes, um, dog bags. Um, he smartly used the bench to make sure he and his dog were secure and to get the muzzle on and off. Well, at that point, to get it back on because he had, was going to the bench to take it off, but the dog got sick before he got there. The AC ha happened on the scene during patrol viewed from about 25 yards away, and she was told the dog was sick, choking and threw up. She responded that he should have taken the dog home and then asked Donald if he had dog bags, which he confirmed. She ordered Donald to muzzle and leave the park. Donald does so. 
Donald didn't visit the police station to assure the ACO this was a temporary choking emergency. Instead, Vegas is taken away from him because the muzzle was removed in a no pet area. Additionally, just regarding that no pet area, there is confusion on if this, if Vegas is a service dog, emotional support dog. You'll even see in the letters from um, Dr. Stone that at one point Dr. Stone uses service dogs. So in his mind too, he thought the dog could be there because it's a service dog. It's, a, it's another story for another day. Um, he'll agree. He told me he'll agree not to go in a no pets area ever again. But it, it, it was a, it is an issue that um, he he firmly believed the dog was allowed there. Um, but that isn't why he was there. The dog he was there because he needed to get to the bench to to um, secure the dog and take the muzzle on and off. Um, Donald's ability to secure and handle Vegas is evident in his everyday walks with multiple times a day without incident and I know I keep repeating this but it's very important um, there have been zero complaints in his ability to handle Vegas or in any non-compliance with the order so our number one priority always remains the safety that's why all of these things are in place and he's compliant with all of them he did, we didn't need to be in this situation, in my experience or my opinion. I'm not saying what the ACO did was right or wrong. I, I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying that there can't, there could have, there is another way, and it, it could be a little bit more humane and a little bit more reasonable. Um, and if you're, if you're inclined to be thinking that at the time, don't think you're too far-fetched because I wanted to make sure that I didn't have blinders on and, and I, I, I wasn't really biased in this situation. So I too, as another young lady, you know, asked a few ACs, I know a lot of ACOs, and asked them what they would do in this situation. And everyone's different. Again, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just saying that there were other options. None of them would have seized the dog. They would have, you know, issued a citation. Some of them would have issued, all of them would, lo would have logged it in. They would have issued a citation. Some would or some wouldn't have. But in that situation where the dog is choking and he takes the muzzle off, in that situation, they just want to seize the dog. So, I know there's laws, I understand that, but reasonable people will not punish for an emergency situation. So, we're just begging you to be reasonable in this situation and look at all the facts. Thank you. Um, Chief. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the council, Mr. Town Manager. So I wasn't going to speak tonight, Mr. Chair, but I, I was under the impression that we were supposed to keep this to the violations, so if you'll give me a little latitude on kind of refuting some of the testimony that's been given. So the very next day after that original hearing in January, Caitlin had a conversation with Mr. Zelensky. He was in violation the very next day. Three hours after he got the dog back, he only had one leash. Caitlin came to me, asked me what we should do. We could have seized the dog immediately on the spot for that violation. We did not. Second, on February 22nd, our ACO sent an email, which I have seen because it was CC'd to me, to Carlos, the trainer, saying, hey, I'll come out on my, own free time, on my own time for free. I'll help train the dog, whatever you need. Carlos's response was, thanks, I'll get back to you. End of June, almost July, no response. Three. The police have never had any instances with Vegas since his hearing. We have. On March 16th, one of my police officers is on a detail, and he's, people are screaming at a convenience store saying, come over, you have to come over here. He runs over there. Vegas, in a muzzle, is growling pretty crazy behavior, lunging at customers. He was no trespass from that convenience store. Not because of the police, not because of Caitlin, but because of his behavior that day. Dog hearings. I heard him mention a couple different times tonight how we should have taken a little bit more latitude. I have spoken with animal control officers that work in cities ten times the size of Southbridge. 
and all of them have said that they wouldn't even allow it to get this far. On the MGL 140, Section 157, Dangerous Dog Hearing Statute, how we're enforcing this tonight, there is no citation. There is no verbal warning. I'll read the part of the statute to you in the, uh, to keep it short. If an owner or keeper of dog is found in violation of an order that you issued, the dog is subject to seizure and impoundment by law enforcement or animal control. If the keeper of the dog is in violation, all reasonable effort shall be made by the seizing authority, ACO Spencer, and the town of Southbridge, to notify the dog owner of such seizure, which he was, and upon receipt, he may file a petition for a hearing, which he did tonight. So there is no citation. Final point, disruptive dogs, and you can check the MGL on this, cannot, absolutely cannot be service dogs. It is in the, the Mass General Law, in the statute, written in the statute. If they're disruptive dogs in any community, they cannot be classified as service dogs. So I would say that Vegas is not a service dog. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank Go ahead, Council Chair. Quickly, Mr. Chairman, sticking to the point of why we're here this evening. Thank you, Chief. If I heard correctly earlier, the dog did show from the, from the ACO, the dog did show fear when he was taken, I guess, into custody. Is that correct? Could you go again with that? Sorry. The, according to your testimony earlier this evening, I just want to recall this. The dog did show fear when you approached the, the dog? The dog was exhibiting a protective manner as in barking, moving forward, hackles up when a uniform presence was uh, in front of them. Thank you. If I can continue, Mr. Yeah, Chair. And when the dog was, I guess, finally taken into your custody, was there another officer present? I was by myself, okay. and as a standard, uh, animal control officers tend to be one officer only. I did call the Oxford Dispatch to let them know that I was down at the shelter with a dangerous dog, and I would call them if I was okay and after I was done there. So if an incident did occur, or they didn't hear from me within a half hour, they would have sent a unit down to investigate if they did not hear from me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Council Ryan. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to ACO Spencer. Um, so the day that the dog was found at the park, he had the three-foot leash on. The three-foot and the four-foot leashes. He was observing the leash law then, right? Mr. Selinski had two leashes attached mm -hmm. to the dog. One to his person, one to his hand. So, but he did, and it, it looks like, looking at the photos here, it appears to be the same leash that he presented here tonight. You said you, um, you guys approached him a couple of hours after the order had been given to him and gave him an educational opportunity. Well, he's clearly still using it. I, I, I was going through this report overall, and I felt that the recommendation was a little harsh for the, the issue at hand. Um, look, um, you can't teach an old dog new tricks sometimes, and sometimes it takes a long time Rome wasn't built in the day. Mr. Zelensky has shown he has made progress. He is doing most of the order. Yeah, he made a mistake. We all are human, we all make mistakes. I don't feel there was no one, no one got hurt. No one's at any, the time um, he was showing fear, but he wasn't being aggressive, right? During that incident with you um, on the, he was showing fear, but not aggression. Mr. Chair, through you. While Mr. Selinski and the dog were in the playground area, there was a fenced barrier between the two of us. Mm -hmm. I would not approach that dog in that state if that fence was not between us for officer safety purposes. So, but without the muzzle on? When Vegas has the muzzle on, because injury to an officer is decreased, they can still cause injury, I would be, have enough confidence in my skill set to approach them. But if this dog, Vegas, did not have a muzzle, I'd be standing right behind the fence for officer safety purposes from the behavior that I was exhibiting that the dog was giving. Okay. Um, so, that does not mean he was showing aggressive behavior, though. At the time, you can say with your experience, based on the history, that would be your response. But he was not showing aggressive behavior at that time. And I just want, I'm saying that to point this out, 
because progress has been made and I don't, I feel like the, the, the idea that we're going to, sorry, my phone is going off in my purse. I apologize. So I, I just do not feel the punishment is appropriate. Do I, I, I don't know what other options we have. I think that's something we have to discuss. I'm not against, um, or I'm not saying we shouldn't have some sort of punishment in place or some sort of fine, some sort of citation, something. Something on the record that we could do, that's one thing. I, I don't know, based on, there has been progress been made, and based on this 11 year history, the amount of progress has been made, I, I, I just don't feel that this is a serious enough violation to warrant taking away his animal. Mr. Chair, through you? Yep, go ahead. If the option to give a citation was available, I would have issued the citation. With the parameters that I was given, that's the job that I executed. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm, I'm saying in general, this is something I think we as a council need to consider because I think, you're right, your job is to be rigid with the law as the interpretation of the law stands. Fine. I think it's our job to be reasonable and realize, hey, progress has been made. I, nothing violent occurred. I, I don't understand the recommendation I guess I, under, I don't understand the recommendation, why we'd recommend a see, the ta permanent taking away of an animal over this type of situation. So I, I'm going to get to the penalty because I want the town manager to weigh in on this based on what I've reviewed so far, based on this hearing, uh, if I could. Uh, you, All right. Team. Thank you. So a couple of things. One, it's been admitted there was a violation tonight. The muzzle was off. We can argue what the reason was, but the muzzle was off. Upon the officer's arrival, not exhibiting any signs of illness at that time based on her training experience, I get the fact that we have evidence that has pictures and all that. I don't have that in front of me. Okay? I conduct. Years. They weren't submitted before this hearing. Okay? So I'm just going to say that. All right? So Chief Woodson has stated very specifically what the town can do, and he stated it from the Mass General Law. There was a violation observed. The animal control office had every right to seize the dog based on an order that was issued five months ago. So, and if, and just to this point, because we have another meeting, but to this point, if the animal control officer wanted to harass Mr. Zielinski, she could have done it four months ago, not five months later. So, and we can argue that, but my, Training, I've been around in law enforcement a long time. If somebody really wants to get somebody, they perhaps could. So I'm not even going to address that. The only remedy that I see on this, and I, the town manager can allude to this, and I'm not sure if you can, in Chapter 140, Section 157A, noncompliance of dog owner or keeper with an order. Noncompliance, that's what we had here, noncompliance of the order. Section 157A, subsection A, an owner or keeper of a dog who fails to comply with the or or an order of a hearing authority, which was us, shall be punished for a first offense by a fine of not more than $500 or imprisonment, but not more than 60 days in jail or house correction. That was what Mr. Zielinski was referring to. That is what the remedy is, I think. My question is, and I don't know, Mr. Town Manager, if you can answer it, we can't issue fines. That would have to go through the court because it's a mass general law criminal matter. Is that not correct? Or Chief, I, I, I'll defer to the two of you because you have experience in these court proceeding type things. So when we Can issued, you just move the mic to, in if, front of if, you? If I may, Mr. Chairman, we, when we issued the letter dated just want to make sure, uh, January 29th, the last paragraph, and I'll read it in its entirety. Please be advised that this order constitutes an order of the Southbridge Hearing Authority issued in accordance with General Law Chapter 140-157, and it may be enforced in accordance with the procedures set forth in said statute, which may include, after further hearing, and I would interpret today as a further hearing due to a subsequent violation, that the dog be declared endangered or ordered to be euthanized. You are further advised upon proof of a violation of these requirements that the statute provides for immediate surrender of the the dog, a requirement that you be prohibited from owning a dog, 
for a period of five years, a fine not more than $500, imprisonment for not more than 60 days, jail or house of correction, or all of the above. Now, when I looked at the statute, there's kind of a blending. It says that, that the hearing authority or, I want to say the court, can, can order some of these. Clearly, I don't think this body has the power to commit someone to the House of Corrections. But I do think that you have the ability to impose some of those um, penalties that he was put on notice for, specifically the, the, um, the fine and possibly taking of the dog. I guess what I would say, I would temper the punishment with the, the, the level of the offense. Um, and I would also say that although not stated there, it is not an uncommon practice in the district courts and elsewhere that um, a penalty could be issued in part and held in abeyance in part. For example, you could issue a $500 fine and ask Mr. Selinsky to pay 250 of it, the rest held in abeyance provided there's no further violations. Um, I think it needs to be crystal clear regardless of what you do that First and foremost, ACO Spencer, not only is she uh, the dog officer, but she's a member of our police department. And her job, first and foremost, in my opinion, is to protect the citizens of Southbridge. And so when she's out there doing her job, it's not only to look after the dog, but also the, the citizens, the children on that playground. So it needs to be crystal clear, in my opinion, Mr. Chairman, that if Mr. Solins gets the dog back, that he has to understand that there are times when that dog may be his service dog, but there's other times where it's not acting in that capacity and he doesn't get the same rights and privileges as he would when he has that dog. To wit, if he's on a playground where it says no pets, where one would otherwise be there with children, I don't think that is a bona fide use of his service dog to be sitting in a you no know, pet area. If he, if he had been there with taking a member of his family to the playground, that might be different. But my read on that situation was he was not there for that purpose. So I do not think that the service dog exception extends to that. So that has to be driven home with whatever you do. But again, I think you're well within your rights if you want to um, impose a fine or perhaps take the dog. Um, but I leave that up to you. But again, I would just, my years in the court, I would temper the, the levying of any type of penalty with the severity of the infraction. Chief Woodson. If I could just add to that, Mr. Chair, our court officer, there's two ways you could approach this also. Agreed with what the town manager had said. We could also process a complaint, a, a summons, for the violation of the Mass General Law. And, we, and, a, and a judge is a neutral party. Can, not that you're not neutral, but a judge could sit, process it as a complaint, have a police officer complete an incident report relatively quickly. Mr. Zielinski would get a, a hearing date and you can put it in the Dudley District Court's hands. That's just another option that you have under any violation of MGL. Our, rec our records, I say records, our court officer could process that complaint. Okay. Questions? Go, uh, go thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you once again. And also thank you to the town manager. And with respect to my fellow counselors, this dog hasn't attacked anyone yet, yet. We heard that earlier, and we heard a counselor state that very clearly. And we heard that back in January, this dog hasn't affected or bitten anybody yet. Let's take direction from our animal control officer not to award this dog back before something happens. Are we waiting for next time? Counselors, I ask you. Let's take the direction from our animal control officer. Thank you. Council Lazar. With all due respect, uh, Councilor Katrona, he did bite somebody. Okay, thank you. He bit Mr. Haggerty. This is what triggered this whole situation. Again. And we all drew the line on whether he was going to get the dog back or not. Um, we want to, everybody wants to beat up ACO. She's not interpreting the law. She's enforcing the law. She didn't write the law, but she enforces the law. If it's written, Chief just told me he's not a service dog. I'm up here gathering information. I want to make an intelligent decision. I don't want to be, I think the emotional side of this issue is probably what gets me the most. That I feel bad. I don't want to find Mr. Zielinski. I don't want to put him in jail. The problem is the dog, not Mr. Zielinski. Just for, 
for an insight on, on dogs. I raised five kids and I had every pet there is known to man, from ferrets, dogs, cats, everything, rabbits. And I had an experience with a pit bull. And I got ripped from here to here. And I have a scar on my face. I'm 6'1", 270, and I kicked that dog's ass. Okay? My point being, dog was unconscious. I'm bleeding like a pig. Thought I lost my eye. The blood shot in my eye. So I beat him with one eye. My point is, if Mr. Zelinsky one time takes that muzzle off because he's throwing up, and it's a child there that can't protect themselves, who wants to take the responsibility? Zelinsky? Great. Some kid's going to get ball, and I'm going to sit here as a counselor saying, here comes chance number two. No more chances. I'm back in the ACO because I know what can happen. I experienced it. I wear the scar on my face. So if you want to talk about nice doggies and pets, you can talk about them. There are some very nice pit bulls. I've had some. I've had some very nice dogs. They're very, they're not protective when they go bite somebody. I, I just, the dog that got me came from a bad breed line. I don't know what the dog's breed line is. But I was the third person that the dog attacked. So if you want to give them another chance, good. Then it's on you when that little girl gets ripped up in the recreation area. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Thank you. Sir, can I show you a video of the we don't have the capacity, it would have to be a public record, so I don't have the capacity to do it right now. Um, Can I just answer to the Chief's accusation? About Go ahead, Mr. Zelensky. Donald Zelensky, 33 Henry Street. Um, about the incident at the, the, uh, the Cumberland Farms, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. I had a muzzle on him, two leashes. I went in. As soon as the manager was right near the door, she said, that dog can't come in here. I said, he's a service dog. She said, I've never seen a service dog with a muzzle on. And that was her reason for throwing me out. He wasn't barking at anybody or threatening anybody. That was it. And I left and I called their corporate office, but the, the reason they cover their backs is they give me a no trust pass. So they don't want my service, I won't give it to them. Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor. Mr. Zelensky, real Mr. quick, before you sit down, if you don't, please. What are the requirements that I made this very clear? Go to the microphone, then. sorry. You made it very difficult this evening for me as a dog lover. Yeah. I've got a dangerous dog, and that dog is secured. And, but one of these things that I put in there was that that dog was supposed to be tethered to you at all times when you took it out, he was. right? Where was the dog tethered to at Dunkin' Donuts? Oh, come to the farms, you mean? Or come to the farms. He yes. was tethered to me. I, I haven't taken this off. This okay. is, I leave it on so I don't have to keep taking it on and off. Okay. He's got to pull me. Okay. Because it's attached to the belt. So you didn't go inside at all? You just stayed outside and you left? No, I went in. And as soon as I went in the door, the, girl, the assistant manager said, dog can't come in here. I said, he's a service dog. She said, well, I've never seen a service dog with a muzzle on. You know? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors? So uh, the question is, uh, Mr. Town Manager, if you could provide some guidance on this, do we first entertain a motion of uh, whether there was a violation of the order first? I think it would be appropriate after hearing that to make a determination based on the, the testimony you heard from Mr. Selinsky as well as ACO Spencer whether in fact you think there was a bona fide violation of the order that was issued back in January. Okay. 
All right, so it's a... Uh, Go ahead, could you state that in a motion form, Mr. Uh, Town Manager, if you could? That would... Um, I, I would move, Mr. Chairman, that the, the council acting as the hearing authority for the town of Southbridge uh, entertain a motion relative to a finding of fact that um, there was, in fact, a violation of the order that was originally issued uh, pursuant to the hearings in January that on the date and time on June, Friday, June 11th, that ACO Spencer did observe a violation of that order. I'll make that motion. I second it. Okay. Discussion on that? You all set with that? I'm going to go roll call. Yes. 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 Councilor Marchetti? Yes. And Councilor Ryan? Yes. Okay. Is Councilor Steves? Well, Councilor Steves and Councilor Dow are excused this evening. Okay. Okay. And then, secondly, Mr. Town Manager, um, there would be a, what we would do as, as a hearing body. So, again, given the, the, the letter that I worked on with Council that was issued to Mrs. Zielinski back on January 29th. That last paragraph spells out what could happen if, in fact, a violation uh, happened after a further hearing. So I think at this point, you have uh, a variety of options that I think someone could make a motion based on one of those, whether it be for a fine, whether it be um, to seize the dog, and then from there, you could have discussion and it could be amended. The fine could be placed up, down, held in abeyance. But I think this, someone has to start the discussion with some type of motion. Right. Jim, I make a motion that we follow the recommendation of ACL, our ACL. Second. And that motion was simply that the dog be removed, right? From the care. Uh, Correct. According to um, further advised upon proof of a violation of these requirements, the statute provides for a, a, a multitude of remedies, including uh, an immediate surrender of the dog. That's listed in the letter that was worked on. It was also our legal counsel help with the drafting of this letter as well. Okay. So the motion was to follow the recommendation, which was that the dog be removed. Correct. ACO Spencer. Recommend, the recommendation is the dog not be reward, uh, rewarded back to Mr. Zielinski. That is the only recommendation. Mr. Chair, through you, yes. my recommendation is to not award Mr. Zielinski his dog back for the possibility of future violations, which I do have a strong feeling which will occur again. But the, this is a simple thing. So it's <laughs> motion not to award back to Mr. Zielinski Vegas based on the violation of this notice. That's the only recommendation is not to take back. It's not to be euthanized or anything like that. It's just not to award him back. Okay, so we had a motion and a second discussion. Council Ryan. Um, I oppose this, um, not surprisingly. I don't think the punishment fits the crime. Um, yes, there was a violation of the order. Everyone on this council agrees. Mr. Zelensky agrees. The police agree. Progress has been made, and I, I, I'm not seeing enough definitive proof to convict, to say this man does not get his dog back. I think it's perfectly reasonable to think I'm taking this off for a quick second. Yes, he was wrong, and he admits he was wrong, but it's totally reasonable to think someone is going to take off the muzzle for a second to clean off the dog, to let the dog have some space for a bit. It was wrong, point of re-education needed. No one got hurt, the dog has not been violent since. It, the crime that was committed, there should be a punishment. This is not it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Council Lazo? Mr. Jamie, it's short and sweet. Um, it's a problem for the town of Southbridge. It's um, a chance that I don't want to take. Um, I'd be willing to buy Mr. Zielinski a new uh, dog if he wants one. Um, but I can't say this. 
I am not in the position as an elected official to take a chance for somebody in Southbridge on another oops, I didn't mean it, to get damaged in some way, especially I fear something happening with a child after the last incident. If that was a child, what would we have said? So I think that uh, my vote is uh, to follow the recommendation. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Roll call. Councillor Adams? Yes. Councillor Catrono? Yes. Councillor Daniel? Yes. Councillor Jovan? Yes. Councillor Lazo? Yes. Councillor Marchetti? Yes. And Councillor Ryan? No. Motion carries. Town will notify you in writing that the town will uh, maintain control of the dog. Okay, and just going to keep the dog. Town will have the dog right now. Yeah, thank you. All right, that's it. Motion to adjourn. So move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Mr. Chairman, if yeah. I just. Every one of The Mr. Slowinski may, I, I, I'm looking for right now. In most instances, if he's not satisfied with this determination, he generally has the ab ability to appeal this to a court, whether it's the district court or the superior court. I'm not sure, but I just want to let him know that in all likelihood he has that opportunity. And if need be necessary, I can uh, explore that further and he can contact my office so that I can give him the appropriate direction. But typically, if someone's not satisfied with the hearing here, there is an appeal process. I've yeah. never been a kid. So all right, Mr. Zelensky, that's it. I just want to let... No, I'm, I'm done. You all, you all said to Well, through you, Mr. Chair, in the notice that Mr. Zelensky has sent, it should be a subsection at the bottom of it that explains the appeal process. Okay. So that's correct. If he's not satisfied, it's either superior or district. Yep. But he'll have the option for a judge to make that decision. Right. Just so he's clear, so he's aware. And, and that's because this council, after much debate over five and a half hours, yes. did not declare the dog a dangerous dog, much to the dismay of some of my colleagues, it was declared a nuisance dog. And we gave lots of leeway to yes. parameters of regulations that he had to follow. Yeah, the dog got sick. That's all right. Sir. All those in favor of German? So moved. No, we already had a motion to send. Yes. Opposed. Opposed. Motion carries. Standard recess for five minutes until we reset for the next meeting.